Fallout 76 just got a 25 gigabyte new update. This is going to add Nuka World into the game with Nuka World on tour. And now, thankfully, Nuka World isn't really on tour and the fairgrounds have settled in Appalachia permanently. Nuka World on tour is a pretty interesting update for Fallout 76 for a few reasons. On one hand, this is actually made by different people, at least partially. This is the first update, as far as we can tell, that was largely developed by Double Eleven, one of the new support studios for Fallout 76. And Double Eleven even hired several Fallout 4 modders, like the ones behind the Fallout 3 remake mod. So on one hand, this is just kind of cool, modders actually working on a Fallout game officially, but also because I think this update has a couple of issues that really hold it back in a big way, and take what is otherwise a great update down a few notches, and I honestly think this may be one that's worth waiting to play, which is kind of an odd recommendation with this game. But let's be honest, as exciting as the Fallout 76 update is, what many of us are hoping for is an update on Starfield. And if you're somebody who's just sick and tired of waiting to be able to explore this galaxy, you can actually have a galaxy to yourself right now. That thanks to today's video sponsor, Galaxy Lamps. The Galaxy Projector can single-handedly transform the atmosphere of an entire room, and it is that perfect last-minute gift for you or others. It does feature full RGB support, so you can have basically any color galaxy you'd like, but there's also things like brightness and intensity settings, which I'm personally a huge fan of. It gives you some flexibility, creating a nice relaxing atmosphere or truly light up a room so you could wake up feeling like you are actually in a galaxy. Your projector will even have support for Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant and this really handy three stand system so you can control how the light is directed. And since you watched this video you're in luck, you can go to galaxylamps.co slash juicehead and use discount code juicehead for up to 15% off. Thanks to Galaxy Lamps for sponsoring this video. So let's first start with what this update actually adds in. The crux of this new update is the Nuka World Fairgrounds are added to Appalachia, bring new events, a new boss fight, and a bunch of miscellaneous activities. There are three new events added in total. Tunnel of Love is the simplest and most chill of these events. It's going to take place in a very familiar looking mine shaft that's been redecorated into a tunnel of love by this robot Mr. Lovely. Except Mr. Lovely didn't finish the job, so the event will involve us setting up some decorations, fixing some of the tracks, as well as actually putting on a wedding for Mr. Lovely and this other robot made out of scraps. Not an actual robot, but I'm not sure Mr. Lovely can tell the difference either way. And there is a cool moment where you put on a wedding ceremony for all of them, a nice community moment, but but again, probably the simplest and most laid back of the bunch. Most Wanted is going to be a Wild West themed event. It's going to take you to another part of the park and you'll be robbing a town of their buckaroos, taking from some of the townsfolk as well as robbing safes that you can find. While doing this, there's going to be deputies and bounty hunters and even a couple of liberators that may try to stop you. But over time, you're going to work to fill up your wagon with a bunch of buckaroos and then you'll defend the wagon for a few minutes from enemies that will attack it as well as there's a big boss at the end with the sheriff. Spin the Wheel is a very dynamic event. You must defend several statues and spin this big wheel in the middle to determine which type of enemies will be attacking those statues. And this is a real thing. One player has to click the button to spin the wheel and you'll get all kinds of different enemy combinations or types. You might have just a couple of very powerful enemies spawning or could have all kinds of other odd combos of enemies you don't typically see together. And there are a few odd activities the wheel could add on like Brahmin tipping or chasing chickens. You'll do this for five rounds total and thematically this is easily the coolest of the events, at least in my eyes, and definitely a pretty fun one. This update does have one short quest added with it. It'll provide some context for the big boss fight that is implemented. A guy at the fairgrounds named Pete will describe how he saw some monster at a mineshaft near the fairgrounds, and he asks us to find proof because nobody else will believe him about this monster. You go over there, find the destruction, find the proof, and you're able to bring that back to Pete, and I'll conclude the quest. There's really not a lot to it, it's just kind of a bit of backstory or lore for the new boss fight added with the Ultra Sight Titan, which is definitely my favorite of the boss enemies in Fallout 76 right now. It's going to be another enemy that you have to spawn with a nuke, and the way this one will work is you actually nuke the quest location, the abandoned mineshaft, and this will force the Ultra Sight Titan, which is based off a mole rat, out of the mineshaft where he appears at the Nuka World on Tour Park. Which is quite nice, because you're not actually fighting in a nuke zone for this one. This is a boss fight with stages to it, which I really like. The animation work on this is great. He'll crawl out of the ground and then shift to other locations. When the Titan crawls out of the ground, you're going to have to melee attack these Ultra Sight Crystals to kind of unlock damage against him. But then from there, you basically attack him. He could do a few attacks against you, like this spitting attack or slamming the ground. And over time, he'll move a few different locations until you eventually finish him off. 
And during the fight, some mole miners and mole rats will spawn in the vicinity and attack you as you're in the fight. But something that is pretty unique about this update is the fairgrounds themselves are a pretty big part of the DLC. You can use all kinds of crafting tables as well as there's actually a nuke arcade to play in. So there's going to be a whole bunch of arcade games you can play. You can actually play some of these against other players if you want to. If you do well at these, you'll actually win points that you can spend on all kinds of different items. And you'll also be awarded some nuke arcade points by completing the other events associated with Nuka World on tour. And there are going to be a whole variety of rewards you can get here. You have this typical range of camp items, outfits, and more. There are these really handy reward lists for each of the new events and Nuka World on tour overall created by Duchess Flame on the Data Miners Discord. I'll have these linked down below. It's probably the easiest way to track what you get from where. And something I personally like that was a bit different is each of these events has a variety of unique weapons you can win from them. These are basically named legendaries that have a unique skin on them and sometimes even have a special fourth star effect. So they're not typical legendaries. These legendaries will pretty much always have the exact same effects assigned to them, but again, also sometimes a special fourth effect that makes them even a bit more unique or powerful. Now, these aren't the best legendaries in the game. It's not like these are really god rolls per se, but it's still fun. You get an instant gratification or instant reward after finishing an event, and you get some kind of cool new weapon you can mess around with. As well as, again, there's going to be a bunch of rewards from the Nuka Cade you can unlock, like the Thirst Zapper, as well as some special weaponized Nuka Cola ammo. So you could basically have a handheld mini nuke launcher. And beyond Nuka World on tour itself, there's going to be a bunch of other miscellaneous changes done in the game. Free camp building is now added to camps. Not a big camp builder, but it's easy to see how this is a huge asset, even if you only occasionally edit your camp in Fallout 76. Just being able to fly around and move wherever and really focus on the building and not worrying too much about your character's placement or getting that perfect angle. There's some new Fallout First things added, the new ammo storage box that can hold an unlimited amount of ammo. This will apply to most of the ammos in the game, although cores are excluded, as well as this boat camp item that is admittedly pretty cool, but also a Fallout First exclusive for a limited time. And they added a new utility item with scout banners that can be bought on the Atomic Shop or one on the scoreboard. These give combat bonuses to those around you and are definitely the most pay to win thing that has ever been added to Fallout 76, at least in my opinion. So those are the big changes or big things added with this update, but what are my thoughts on it? Should you come back or reinstall Fallout 76 to play this or even just buy the game for this update. I gotta say, I'm pretty mixed on this update overall, which definitely might surprise some of you, but I think this is an update that has a couple of big issues among a ton of positives. On one hand, I think the actual content added is probably the best content we've gotten for Fallout 76 all year. Nuka World on Tour really exceeded at creating a fun theme and sticking to it. It genuinely does feel like Nuka World came to Fallout 76. You're going to do events around it, unlock new weapons around it, and of course get a bunch of camp items related to Nuka World. Past updates for Fallout 76 really lacked thematic cohesion, so it's nice to see this coming into play with this one, and I think it pays off big time. This is also the first time that Fallout 76 actually delivered everything on its road. Roadmap. Every other year when it got to that fourth quarter or the final segment of the roadmap, things were either cut or that segment was delayed in its entirety. But 2022, they put out a roadmap and actually hit everything on it. I'm not really sure if this is something I should praise because it's kind of what's expected. That is the point of a roadmap. But at the very least, the fact that they hit everything this year definitely makes me feel like the game is trending in a positive way rather than a negative way. And Nickel World on Tour had a pretty nice sense of community. Due to all the events being at roughly the same location, and there's even a bunch of crafting tables there, you'll just find lots of people hanging out here. Immediately after an event, people will run over to the publicly placed crafting tables and do all kinds of things, or you could see some other people that will run over and hit the arcade, try and play some games, maybe even play against each other. And I would say it's an intangible of the update overall that creates a pretty fun and interesting online gaming moment. I know though in the future, I would love to see more questing content. I think even with this update, it could have been fun to actually do some quests to help them set up Nuka World on tour. Even with what we did get, where it's just one short and very forgettable quest, I still feel like what they added with this update is multiplayer Fallout done right. The sense of community exceeds here, it was thematically on point, and in general, a ton of fun moments. One change I would personally love to see going forward is if the events could be played one after another. Right now, the way things work are that a Nuka World on Tour event will pop up at the top of the hour every hour, at least for the next few weeks. So at noon and at 1 p.m., there's a guaranteed chance one of these events will spawn, but then 20 minutes later, when the next event spawns, it could be something completely unrelated. I think it'd be pretty cool if going forward, they made it so all of these events will spawn one after another. So if one spawns, the other two will pop up right after it, so 
it really feels like the fair came to town and you have an hour of hanging out at the fairgrounds. I really loved how all the events reward you with weapons, although small it gave me something to immediately mess around with and that dopamine hit. And I think the boss fight is the coolest boss fight in the game. I think it's the weakest boss from like a thematic or what the boss actually is. Like it's a giant mutated mole rat. Really not that interesting compared to the Colossus or the Scorch Beast Queen. But these stages and the way you play through the boss fight is quite fun. And even little things came together to make this all feel a bit special, like even the sound effects being Nuka World themed was a really nice touch. So this all sounds overwhelmingly positive. Why am I mixed on this update? Well, there's actually only a couple of things I didn't like, but they're pretty big things and even somewhat related, that being lag and legacy weapons. One feature that was intended to come with this update was the removal of legacy weapons. If you're not familiar, basically what these are are things that used to be able to spawn in Fallout 76, but no longer can. So like an energy weapon with an explosive effect that can no longer spawn, but some people had them and they got duped, so now a lot of people have them. And the reason a lot of people have and use them is they deal a ridiculous amount of damage. Some of these being the highest damage weapons in the game by a considerable degree. This explosive flamer I use is a legacy weapon. It's pretty good, although it's under leveled and doesn't have the most ideal stats on it. And the worst culprit in general is going to be the explosive Gatling plasma that can absolutely melt things. These are meant to be removed, and there was even testing on the PTS where these were removed, and it seems like they were coming with this update. Unfortunately, just before the update was meant to ship, they announced that we need a bit more time to implement this than originally projected. So this will likely be fixed in a future update. Perhaps they ran into a bug or something like that. But legacy weapons really suck at events like Nuka World on tour because their damage output is just insane. You'll see someone like this just perched up somewhere dealing insane amounts of area of effect damage to enemies to the point where in some events you have mere seconds to get a hit off on an enemy. There's basically one person just dealing a ridiculous amount of damage so you can't actually damage anything. It got to the point where during some of the events I had to seriously try and almost strategize how I was going to actually deal damage against enemies. I had to go out of my way to become a participant in the game, which is just not fun. It's actually largely unpleasant. And part of this is legacy weapons. Part of this is just there's a ton of people playing these events right now. But in general, legacy weapons definitely take away from events like this. This has been a problem for years now, and seemingly it'll be fixed with a future update. Bethesda doesn't have the best track record with delaying features and implementing them later. Remember pets? Remember four-star legendaries? Yeah, those just never came. So I think legacy weapons will be different Different, but at the same time, we don't know when this might be fixed. Maybe it's in January, maybe it's not till March or later. And regardless, it's not like this is a new problem. Legacy weapons have been overpowered for several years now, but Bethesda is taking their sweet time to fix it. Even if they fixed it today, it would be too late. These should have been fixed probably over a year ago and probably several years ago. But the second major issue I had was with the lag and just a myriad of odd bugs seemingly as a result of that lag. This is definitely the buggiest update I've played for Fallout 76 and a very long time. It seems like a large part of what makes Nuka World on tour so great, the central community aspect where you're all hanging out in one place, also leads to some pretty serious server instability. I had numerous animation bugs with enemies, like an enemy would just get stuck in a certain position or not play animations properly. At one point, the Ultrasight Titan was just kind of sitting there, not going back in his hole like he should be. I had this weird aim down sights bug where the animations just didn't play when I stopped aiming down sights, it just kind of snapped back to where I should be. At one point, fast track travel for me was failing, so I literally just walked to one of the events rather than fast traveling there after trying and failing several times. But then halfway through playing through that event, I did fast travel randomly because I guess it caught up and kicked in at a rather unfortunate time. Some things just didn't spawn for me for some reason, like the new ammo box that's supposed to be here just didn't spawn. I tried server hopping, it didn't actually fix until I restarted the game. Sometimes when using my jetpack, it would launch me into the air, almost like I super jumped into the air from my jetpack. And what was definitely the most annoying is several events would take forever to progress. Like you'd finish the objective for that event and kind of get stuck or just hang there for a while. So everyone would just kind of be sitting around with nothing to do because we finished the objective, but it took a second for the event to actually realize we finished that objective and progress. So I would say none of these lag related bugs alone ruined my experience, but they were just a consistent issue. As you played Nuka World on tour over time, they really started to become a drag and a nuisance. I tried restarting the game, I tried server hopping, and I even filmed footage over multiple days but these issues persisted in one way or another. And I'd almost say both the lag and the legacy thing were hit or miss. A lot of times I was playing fine. There weren't many legacy users or was able to play relatively normally. But at other points you would get a bunch of problems, whether it be glitches or even just being barely 
able to hit some of the enemies as they spawn and it really takes away from the experience in a very substantial way. Overall for me, Nuka World on Tour is the best update Fallout 76 got in 2022 and one of my favorite updates for the game ever. This is one that will definitely get better over time as legacies are removed and hopefully the lag comes down, as well as I'm sure over time literally just less people will actually play these events. I know I'd say it's still a good event to play even despite the issues, but if like legacies get fixed in a month then it's probably just worth waiting. Either way, those are my thoughts. Hopefully you guys found this video informative or enjoyable. Both that, I thank you all again for watching and I hope to see you all next time. Later.